Hello and welcome everyone. Today's presentation is on Carbapenem resistant Acinobacter bomani crab infections, the IDSA guidelines. So the crab is often used as a term, although it is difficult to differentiate between Carbapenem resistant Acinobacter bomani from other species within the same complex. Now crab is commonly found in respiratory specimens and wounds. But the real problem is to ascertain whether this is a colonizing organism or a true pathogen. So once the Acinetobacter bomani acquires the carbapenem, it usually becomes resistant to most of the antibiotics effective against the wild type, leaving very limited treatment options. Now the mechanism of resistance are oxa carbapenemase, that is oxa 24 by 40 or oxa 23, leading to beta lactam resistance. Crab may produce metallobetalactamases and additional serine carbapenemases, limiting the beta lactam usage. Resistance to sulbactam involves mutation targeting the PPVs and possibly beta lactamase productions. Aminoglycoside modifying enzymes or the 16SRRNA methyl transferase often make aminoglycosides ineffective. Fluoroquinolone resistance is typically mediated by mutations in the quinolone resistance determining regions. Now a lack of standardized treatment is there, so there is no established standard of care for crab infections and comparative studies to test effectiveness are limited. This results in uncertainty regarding the best treatment approach for these infections. Now what is the role of combination antibiotic therapy in treating crab? This is the first question. Now the preferred approach is to use at least two active agents at least until the clinical improvement is noted. This is due to limited evidence of effectiveness of any singular organism. The step down therapy, in case where prolonged therapy is needed like osteomyelitis, a single agent may be considered after the initial combination therapy. Now evidence from the studies, in vitro and animal studies show mixed results regarding the efficacy of combination therapy. Observational studies have varied results and many are limited by factors such as heterogeneity in patient population and treatment variations. Now clinical trials. Only one of the eight clinical trials showed a potential benefit of combination therapy. Trials investigating combination therapy including cholestin and other agents like rifampin, phosphomycin, meropenem did not give a consistently improved outcome results. Now the rationale for combination therapy, the use of two agents may increase the likelihood of administering at least one agent which is effective. Now the crab often have high bacterial burdens and the risk of developing resistance during the therapy. The combination therapy can address these challenges by providing a broader coverage and reducing the likelihood of the resistance development. The other treatment options that are available are tetracycline, especially minocycline, tegcycline, polymyxin B or cefidirocol. Ampicillin cerbactam is suggested even in face of demonstrated resistance. Exclusion syn therapy. The combination of meropenem cholestin without a third agent is not recommended based on clinical trial results. Phosphomycin or rivampicin are not advised as components of combination therapy. Now, what is the role of ampicillin cellbactam in these infections? Now, high dose ampicillin cellbactam is recommended as the part of combination therapy in crab infections. This recommendation stands regardless of whether susceptibility to the drug is demonstrated or not. Cellbactam's mechanism of action. Cellbactam acts as a beta lactam as inhibitor and at high doses, it affects target the specific penicillin binding protein of acinetobacter. Now evidence of effectiveness. In vitro animal studies and clinical outcome data have demonstrated that cellbactam has a unique activity against acinetobacter bomani. High dose ampicillin that is 6 to 9 grams daily of the cellbactam component have shown promising results in various studies. Clinical trials and meta-analysis. Clinical trials have shown mixed results regarding the effectiveness of ampicillin cellbactam, but meta-analysis have suggested its effectiveness in reducing mortality and lower nephrotoxicity compared to polymyxin-based regimens. One trial demonstrated clinical improvement with cholesterol cellbactam in crab pneumonia, although it had limitations like small sample size and open level design. Dosing and formulation. 
the recommended dose is 18 to 27 grams of ampicillin sulbactam the recommended dose is 18 to 27 grams of ampicillin sulbactam per day equivalent to 6 to 9 grams of sulbactam component ampicillin sulbactam is usually administered in 2 is to 1 formulation the efficacy despite resistance even when non susceptibility to ampicillin sulbactam is shown the drug may still be effective due to the ampicillin sulbactam's ability to target altered ppv now sulbactam Dolobactam, a newer formulation under study, suggests insight into dosing of ampicillin sulbactam or for crab infections, indicating the potential of high dose treatment strategies. Now, what is the role of polymyxin? Now, polymyxin B is recommended for use as at least one of the agents for treating crab infections. In vitro studies and the preference for polymyxin. Polymyxin, including cholestin, and polymyxin B so reliable in vitro activity against crab isolates. Polymyxin B is preferred over cholestin for non-urinary tract infections. Now for crab UTIs, cholestin is favored as it converts to the active form in the urinary tract. Now limitations in susceptibility criteria. There is no established CLSI susceptibility criteria for polymyxin. So the effectiveness of polymyxin is likely reduced with isolates of minimum inhibitory concentration greater than 2. Now, there is an advisory against polymyxin monotherapy. Serum concentration of polymyxin in conventional dosing are highly variable and may not always achieve effective bactericidal activity. High dose is needed to treat systemic infections and close to threshold for nephrotoxicity. So, intravenous polymyxin shows suboptimal activity in pulmonary epithelium, often failing to kill the bacteria that is present in the drug, that is present in the lung. Clinical failure and resistant emergence have been reported during polymyxin monotherapy. Now, what is the role of tetracycline derivatives for treatment of infections caused by crab? Now, these are minocycline and tetracycline. High dose is can be added as one of the agents in the combination therapy. Minocycline is preferred due to extensive clinical experience and established CLSI susceptibility criteria. Well, tetracycline is also a viable option. In vitro study have shown that tetracycline, deri tetracycline derivatives like minocycline, tetracycline and erbacycline show in vitro activity against crab. There is a capability to overcome common tetracycline resistant mechanisms. Clinical experience with minocycline has shown that it has been used since 1960s as an oral and IV form and it still has activity against almost 80% of the crab isolates. High dose minocycline may be more effective, especially in combination with other agents like ampicillin, sulbactam, and polymyxin B. Now, limitations and concerns. Tetracyclines are limited urine and serum concentration due to rapid tissue distribution. Observation study on minocycline effectiveness are limited, but it is still considered a reasonable option. Regarding TG cycline. TG cycline is available as IV form, lacks specific susceptibility criteria for crab, and high dose is suggested to reduce mortality. Now, adverse effects are both minocycline and TG cycline can cause nausea at high doses. Other tetracycline derivatives like erbacycline and omdacycline have shown limited effectiveness against crab. Erbacycline use is limited to situations where minocycline and TG cycline are not effective or tolerable. Omdacycline is not recommended due to limited efficacy and clinical experience. Now, what is the role of cefidirocol? Now, cefidirocol should be reserved for refractory infections. In vitro activity is, is a novel beta lactam with good in vitro activity against crab isolates. 95% of the isolates are susceptible to cefidirocol. Now, the susceptibility is challenging due to variable iron concentration in testing media and reproducible mm -hmm. tissues. Now, clinical trial results have shown mixed results. One trial showed higher mortality in patients treated with cefidirocol compared to polymyxin-based regimen. Another trial showed no significant difference in outcome between cefidirocol versus high-dose infusions of meropenem in pneumonia patients. Now, observational studies have shown uh, lower 30-day mortality with crab in cefidirocol compared to cholestin regimens. However, the recurrent crab infection is more likely to be in the cefidirocol group. Recurrent infections and resistance. Now, there is a concern about recurrent crab infections in cefidirocol group. Now, the recommendation for combination is 
when prescribed, sephitrocol should be used as a part of combination therapy, increasing the likelihood of being one of the effective agents. And cautious use is advised due to limitations and mixed results. Sephitrocol should be used with caution and generally considered only after other treatment options have been exhausted. Now, regarding the role of extended infusion, meropenem and imipenem cilastatin. High dose extended infusion, meropenem, imipenem is not advised in CRAB, in vitro data and triple combination. Potential effectiveness of triple combination of including meropenem with ampicillin salvactam or either mino or poly have shown potential effectiveness. This combination is not specifically recommended in clinical practice, however. Now, clinical trial outcomes, two large trials assessing cholesterol monotherapy versus cholesterol combined with meropenem did not show any benefit of the combination therapy. A secondary analysis also did not improve outcomes in vitro synergy between cholesterol and meropenem. Imipenem cilastatin may have retained activity against some of the meropenem resistance isolates. However, CRAB isolates typically have significantly high meropenem and imipenem minimum inhibitory concentration making the drug unlikely to be of any benefit. Now concerns of beta lactam toxicity, single high dose ampicillin is suggested as a core component using meropenem and cilicetin may lead to additive beta lactam toxicity without any clinical benefits. Regarding the role of rifampicin, now the use of rifabutin and other rifampicin is not advised to treat crab infections. Rifampicin mechanism of action is that inhibits the bacterial RNA polymerase and rifabutin shows potential in vitro and animal models against astromactor bomani more so than rifampin. Now clinical trials have shown that cholestin versus cholestin combined with rifampin had no significant mortality benefit and the trials were limitation being suboptimal cholestin dosing and small sample size. Now potential synergy is seen between rifampin Putin and polymyxin due to later's ability to disrupt the bacterial membrane, potentially aiding in the rifamycin penetration. The limitations of the existing trial. It remains uncertain if rifamycin as opposed to rifampin could be used to show benefit in clinical trials. Now the toxicity is also there given the known toxicities and drug interactions with rifampicin and the clear absence of any benefit makes them not favorable to use in crab infections. Regarding the role of nebulized Antibiotics, they are not suggested for crab infections. Clinical trials have shown conflicting results and three clinical trials comparing nebulized cholestin, amikacin have shown in BAP patients that did not improve survival in crab infections. The meta-analysis involving patients with BAP showed no survival benefit or reduction in ICU stay or ventilator use. Now, Nebulized antibiotics may not achieve sufficient penetration in the lung tissue to significantly have bactericidal activity. Suboptimal delivery devices, the use of parenteral formulation not designed for inhalation will contribute to these limitations. The risks are the concern about uneven distribution of the infected lungs, potential respiratory complications like bronchoconstriction. Professional society stance has been uh, controversial with conflicting views from various societies against use of these therapies. So what would be our general approach? Our general approach would be to recommend a combination therapy of at least two agent at least until a positive clinical response is seen. This is due to limited data supporting the effectiveness of uh, any single uh, agent. Out of this agent, the most important agent should be high dose ampicillin sulbactam with the sulbactam's dose being 6 to 9 grams per day. It is suggested to include in all combinations. It is based on the unique activity of sulbactam against astrobacter bomani. Other treatment options is polymyxin, minocycline and cefidurocol which could be added as a part of the treatment regimen. Phosphomycin and rifampicin are not recommended as a part of treatment. Now, there are certain therapies which are excluded, that is high dose extended infusion of carbapenems, nebulized antibiotics. Thank you for your patience.